We're going to talk today about the what, where, how, and why of personalization. Um, most of you will probably know who Experian are, um, but I'm, I'm from a part of Experian which is fairly new, uh, digital media and marketing services. Historically, we've had marketing services, um, but not so much on the digital side of things. So um, I'm probably one of two or three people in Nottingham that are actually in the, the digital media side of things. The rest of my crew is in London, and hence why I've got no friends with me here today. So um, all on my own representing uh, digital. So what we're going to talk about today, uh, what is personalization? So I'm going to look at what I think are good examples of who's doing personalization well. Um, three or four companies, you can probably guess who they are right now. Um, where should you use personalization? So personalization we know traditionally is, you know, hi Ian, I know you're in an email and a salutation, that kind of thing, but there's more to it than that. Um, so I'll go through where you can use it within the marketing funnel. Uh, why should you personalize? Um, I can't be bothered really, you know, what, what's the point? I've got a website, I've got, I've got marketing, what's the point of doing personalization? So I've just got a few facts and figures around, from around the web, they're not my own facts and figures, so I'm, I'm not going to pretend that I know everything about you know, the, the results, but I'm going to show you a few facts and figures. Um, and then finally, how do you personalize? This one's we're going to go into a bit more detail. Um, so looking at those companies who do it well, um, and then kind of throwing in a bit of curve, curveball at the end in terms of where we're evolving our, our tech with, a, with Experian, and looking at how do you personalize when you don't know who it is. Ooh, exciting stuff. <clears throat> so, I, I, I had to do something personal, I'm talking about personalization. You probably all recognize this as a fairly standard thing. This is my Amazon homepage. Um, you can probably take from that what you will. I don't know if the, 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 the image is so clear, but the top, lots of coffee. Um, that's not me personally, that's my wife, honestly. And then I, I looked at this when I took the screenshot and it was um, merciful silence, dying truth, married lies. I'm like, huh? <laughs> this is a family account, right? So this is my wife looking at books that married lies tell me a secret in the dark. I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? Um, so I asked her, but it, it's just literature, honest. That's what she likes. Um, but with Amazon, obviously, they have tons and tons of customer data. They know what their customers are doing. They know what I'm doing. They, look, they know where, where I'm browsing, what I'm browsing for. So the recommendations there, you know, my, my wife's been looking for coffee capsules for work, so they're recommending the work coffee capsules in, in abundance. Um, the literature that she likes looking at, and then randomly a mosquito spray. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, so we've got all those things. And as I say, they know how and where and why you're, you're buying things, but they've also got the power of other people. So other people who have looked at Merciful Silence or another book like that and, and, and have liked it and have bought it. Um, so they're using the power of the crowds, the, the power of, of everybody else who is like you. So you think you're getting a personal experience, but in fact, it's something that somebody else who looks like you, maybe Ian over there, is the same as Ian over here. So they, they basically, um, use, their, use their data, use their algorithms, and come up with a really personalized experience for me. And then, yeah, bizarrely, my daughter's buying some new, new phone things at the bottom. Don't, don't worry about that. I don't like pink phone covers. Um, so yeah, Amazon, killing it in the personalization space. They've got lots of data. Coming back to the data point. So a second company, who you can probably all um, understand, and probably most people use, it's a bit blurry again, but <clears throat> personalizing Netflix. So this is um, my, yeah, unfortunately, this is my recommendations from, from Netflix. Um, nothing too em embarrassing, I don't think. I don't want to know what that Netflix glow is all about, but yeah. Everything else um, is kind of great because Netflix doesn't know already that I've, I've already seen Peep Show. I've watched it on Channel 4 when it was first out millions of years ago. I do love QI, I've watched all the episodes. I do love Mock the Week, Russell Arrow, yeah. and, and Red Dwarf, yeah, again, I used to watch it and, and, and I, I know it very well. Um, so they're, again, using the customer power. So they're, they're saying people like you generally like these things. They're, they're saying as well, they, they give you a, um, a match percentage, which gives you some kind of degree of 
creepiness. So they, they go, well, you, you're 99% likely to like pe uh, Peep Show. Well, fair enough, I do. Um, but again, you can see all the different recommendations. I mean, I, mean I, I could show you my daughter's Netflix, but it's a bit too weird, so I won't. Um, and, but they, they know everything ab about you or your persona. So coming back to, to that, that data um, point again, they've got lots of data. The power of the crowd, the power of the, 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 the audience that looks like you but isn't you, and they can use that to, to personalize your experience. And then the last company that I'm going to uh, look at is Spotify. Um, I listen to a lot of Spotify. I think it tends to drown out my work colleagues uh, quite nicely at, at work. Um, but they introduced a thing called Discover Weekly, which I personally love. Um, I find it introduces me to, to new music, um, to new genres, in, in a way. But this, this kind of just gives you an overview of how they do it. So again, you've listened to a bunch of songs that you like. You, you love it, you say, I favorite it, or you put it into a playlist. So is everybody else on Spotify. They're doing that as well. So there are billions and billions of playlists on Spotify. So all that data goes into their super duper algorithms and they create similar personas. So people who, who listen to the same kind of music as you do, but not exactly the same, similar. So they, they can then recommend what you know, Joe Bloggs has been listening to, which is kind of like what you like, but slightly different. So you might like something like a bit like meatloaf, maybe not meatloaf, use, it, use that as a, as a bad example. But something that you, 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 know, you like, and it'll, it'll give you a bit more of a, you know, a personalized feel again. So finding all the songs that fit your profile, but you haven't listened to yet. And they present to, that to you in Discover Weekly. Um, I'm, I can't remember how old, I, I forgot, I'm 43, yeah, I'm 43 years old. Um, and I still like music, which is kind of youngish sometimes, um, and kind of rocky. And Jamie, who's an ex colleague of mine from uni days, we used to have quite similar tastes. But if you looked at me versus Jamie, we're not the same. You know, I'm, I'm old, he's, he's young and smelly. Um, so, you know, but you wouldn't think that we'd have the same kind of taste. But, you know, because it knows that I listen to similar music to Jamie, we get fairly similar Discover Weeklies. <clears throat> so, just three examples of companies that are doing personalization well. Um, Going to move on to where can it be used. So, personalization, as I said, comes in many forms. Ugh, users are tricky beasts, as we've, we've gone through. I mean, I think Owen uh, identified this as well in terms of advertising. So, all this iconography. So, you'll have a laptop, you'll have a workstation at work, you'll have a mobile phone. But you may maybe use like Chrome, you maybe use Safari, you maybe use email and whatever that thing with the paintbrushes. Um, probably a different browser that I don't realize. Um, and then you've also got a tablet and you've also got connected TVs and you've got consoles now. So as a user, you expect a company to, to, to understand who you are across all these devices. But that's bloody hard, let's be honest. You know, how can you tie that cookie there to that Wi-Fi element there, to that location there? It's a really difficult job, but we're gonna try and, try and um, conquer that. So, in terms of the marketing funnel, you've got to try and fit all these bits in and understand where you want to, to interact with someone. Because as a user nowadays, when we're watching Sky Q or Netflix, we're gonna go from one room and then pick it up in the, in, the, in the next room. We don't want to be starting again from that point where I left like 20 minutes ago. I want it exactly where I left it. And I want that continuation of service because we're all getting you know, short on time. We all just want our, everything how it wants to be. And that goes the same in, in, in terms of advertising and personalized content. So the marketing challenge. So this is what we've identified as the funnel. So we have awareness. I'm gonna go back to my little iPad at the moment, just because I can't remember all the little things in terms of all these um, uh, items. So we have the original funnel starts with awareness. So we have 
in that area. We've got branding. We've got prospecting. We've got CRM. We've got DMPs, so people who are loading up their, their, their audiences for, for execution. You've got single customer view. You've got social. You've got all these, all these areas in, in, in the awareness funnel where you can create a single source. So I think Owen talked about personas. Again, if you take this identity or, or feeling of I'm building something once, can I use it all the way through the funnel? This really happens in, in, in today's age because if you're in, in this end of the funnel, you've got your own KPIs, you've got your own targets to hit. You know, if you're, if you're sending an email out or you're, you know, you're, you've got um, an SCV, then you've got specific KPIs that you, you need to hit. You don't care about the guy actually who looks after the website. Yeah, that's his job. He's got, he's got stuff to worry about. That's, that's not my problem. As long as I'm doing my bit, boss, I'm, I'm all right. But what we're trying to say is, we should be really thinking about this in terms of a persona. So what does Ian want over here on Facebook? Where does that go to next on search? Do we, do we give him the same thing? Again, maybe he's searching for something on, maybe he's been given something on Instagram or in Google. Or maybe, you know, that's Sky TV where he's had a, a targeted programmatic um, advert shown to him in his household. And then use that same persona in terms of the decision. So we come to a website. Oh, it's Ian. Oh, we've offered him that, that offer back at Facebook, back at you know, TV. Let's offer him the same offer. There's no point offering him something else because it's a bit stupid. You come, if he's gone through that funnel with a specific offer and then you get to the website and it's not tailored, what's, what's the point of that? You're, you're losing the, the whole context, really, and you're losing the user. And then the final point in action. So, You've got a user, you've potentially, hopefully, converted that person. So you've gone through the whole funnel, you've given them an offer, which is consistent, you've integrated you know, your personas, your choices, all the way through, you've got them to buy, yes, in the bag. And then, you can then start running your CRM function. You then start using them, they've added to your actual knowledge. So they're another of your customers. So you can use them, and then start learning more about them. So you use Ian, who you've done all this work to try and convert him into a customer, and he's helping you now convert other customers because he's becoming your, one of your personas or one of your profiles. But it's a tricky job. So back to the points here. We need to identify the consumer as accurately as possible. You will have to use that consumer and that information that you have to inform everything along your marketing funnel. And there's lots of people doing this. And you know, as we've said, said throughout the day, there's lots of data out there. You know, it, it might be cheap, it might be, might be expensive, but you've got to use data. You've got to inform your, your, your actions throughout that whole funnel. And if you do that, then hopefully, the user's gonna see more relevant messages. They're gonna have a better experience. You're going to acquire customers, but you're also going to re retain them. You're going to improve your conversion rates because you're not wasting that, that offer on somebody who's never going to convert. Back to the bottom two points. Because we're generally, a, you know, historically, a financial company, eligibility, affordability, blah, all that kind of thing. Um, right product, right person. We can't you know, give someone an offer who they're not entitled to. But that, that works across the whole ecosystem. You know, we don't just have to um, work in terms of financial service. Actually, I forgot something. Back on the Spotify thing, I was going to say something I thought was funny. A digital mashup, favorite band, LinkedIn Park. If anyone can find better than that, tweet it or Slido, and then I'll buy them a drink better uh, afterwards at the, at the bar. But yeah, we're going too fast. <coughs> so. Why should I bother with personalization? It's a bit of a faff, isn't it? Sounds like it's a lot of hard work. Again, I'm just going to go back to my notes because there's some facts and figures on here that I don't intimately know. So, users are 79% more likely to engage with an offer where it's been personalized. So, that's come from a study from Marquito. Um, so where your brand reflects their, their wishes, 79% more likely to engage with that. 
Um, marketers, 88% of marketers reported seeing measurable improvements to due to personalization, with more than half of those reporting a 10% uplift in sales. You know, you're spending a bit more time personalizing, but the effects, you know, they, they say for themselves. 78% um, of, of users say personally relevant content increases their purchase intent. Again, why wouldn't you do it? I mean, I'm not going to buy something that's not relevant to me. If I see an ad, I'm like, great, why do I want to see something for a bloody lady's nails or shavers or something like that? That's not for me. I want to see beer or cars or something like that, because I'm a manly man, obviously. Um, and then, again, marketers, 50% reduction in acquisition cost. 50%. So if you're spending five pounds per user to acquire them, that could be two pound 50. I'm good at maths. Um, and then, last, last little snippet, five to 15% increase in revenues. So that is, I think that was a, a US study coming from McKinsey. So where you're reducing those costs by 50%, five to 15% increase in revenues just by and, and increasing the, the efficiency of your marketing stack. Representing the Experian brand yet again. Woo! So we work with, with a company called Sky, you might have heard of them. Um, they have teleboxes that monitor your every usage. Um, so they show, show ads which are targeted, so they use Experian data um, to show you relevant ads, um, but also other, other, other data. But when we were doing a study, um, they said that consumers who were targeted with relevant ads, so targeted, personalized ads, um, were less likely to channel switch. I don't know anyone who actually watches ads nowadays, I just record everything and skip through it, but I didn't say that to Sky, obviously. <laughs> How do you personalize? Well, this is the, this is the tricky bit. And this is a bit where it, it gets a bit interesting. So we've done a bit of, of, of research, we've done some studies. So we said uh, a survey out, and more than seven out of 10 people um, expect consistent experiences. Coming back to that same the theme, you know, this is our own studies. So we, we, we asked a bunch of people, and they said, yeah, everyone expects to have that same consistent um, uh, experience across, across all the channels. People are picky. They don't want to you know, have the wrong, wrong, wrong data. Um, and only 28% of marketers currently personalize their on-site experience. A lot of people, as I said before, you'll get Dear Ian emails, or well, most people won't because they're not called Ian, but they'll get a Dear Name email. I'm, I'm sure we've all had an email which says Dear Name in, in brackets. That's, that's the funny one. They're not very good at personalization. Um, so what we're trying to then um, to solve is this top, top left bit. So Typically, up to 40, 50% of visitors to your, your site, depending on who you are, obviously Amazon, Facebook, you have to be logged in most of the time. Typically, 40% of visitors are unknown or unrecognized. So how do you personalize when it's someone who's just come to your site, you don't know who they are, you only find out eventually when they've converted. So that's if they like your offer and they've gone through everything. Um, this is what we've done. We have created a bunch of profiles. This is standard Experian demographics. So we've got all these things, city prosperity through to rental hubs. We've got the whole UK population. Where we've got a customer population, so you pretend you've got 200,000 customers, you're doing well. We can profile that. We can see who's, who's over-indexing or under-indexing on your, on your profile versus the UK population. We can then explode that. Uh, prestige positions from 44,000 to 1.8 million, we can start you know, giving you some insight on, the, on these people. So we can explode that for you. What we can also do, this is the new interesting techie bit, put a pixel on your site, you call Experian, we give you that data back. You don't know who it is, so those prestige positions, they come onto your site, pixel fires off to Experian, we say, oh, it's a prestige pres uh, uh, person, forgot what it was called. Um, so you want to show them this offer rather than a different offer. 
So this is really getting down into the crux of things. So we have 120 digital identifiers that is linked to Experian data in the UK. So we're currently covering 70% of the, uh, the households connected and some techie information about how quickly it is returned. I don't really understand how fast that is. That's quick. Um, so just four examples here. So let's take Jamie again, visitor one. He lives in a deprived area. He gets a really bad credit card. Visitor two, Matt lives in a bit of a better area. He gets a medium offer. Visitor three, Safi, she's posh. She gets a platinum credit card. And then visitor four, Nazneen, she's just been a student. She just gets a debit card offer, so she's not. Um, so, to wrap up, if you have data on your customers, use it to personalize. Because, you know, they're your customers. You can use them to, to enhance your, your experience, but also other people's experience who haven't come to your site and, custom, and, and converted yet. Personalization isn't all about the individual. So it, it's groups, it's personas. It makes you feel like an individual, but it's not. And that's important for GDPR as well. Um, match your content to the customer's profile personas. Again, going back to that. Uh, that same thing, so the right offer for the right person. And if you don't know who it is, ask someone else that, who does, like me or one of my clever people. That's as much as I was going to go through today. Hopefully it's a um, quick fire step through personalization. Um, but thanks very much.